SMT Nation, we back, and we're going to be talking about AT&T here today. Uh, they're fresh off their Q2 earnings, and there was a lot of growth. There was a lot of positivity. Some financial issues, I guess you could make an argument for, but they're growing, and uh, network-wise, it couldn't be a better time, and I'll explain that in today's video. All right, so AT&T has been really focusing on fiber. To some of you, this would be a game changer if AT&T was to make their fiber-to-premise service available to you, you know, what they call AT&T U-verse and what they do with fiber could potentially give you a, the best uh, experience that you could have for home internet. Symmetrical speeds, low latency, you know, if, if maybe your cable operators aren't doing you right, don't really have fixed wireless, maybe your, you know, DSL provider sucks or your cable ISP sucks or satellite, see if fiber came, it would be huge. And they're growing the service. They're expanding the footprint. They're laying fiber. And it's not the only thing they do with their fiber. They also build fiber as an enterprise grade service, you know, running their own fiber to their own tower sites, as well as to other tower sites for other companies and, and enterprise applications and business. It's a win all the way around and it's a profitable segment for them. And it's got a huge ROI. All right. They, in fact, it's a really profitable service for them. I think their ARPU is somewhere around like $61 for the fiber to premise. Anyways, it continues to grow and it's a bright spot for them. So I've highlighted all those things just to kind of set the stage for this next piece. AT&T blast pass expectations on 5G build out and customer growth. The reason why I wanted to bring this up today, and I know a lot of you don't always listen or watch the podcast because it's a long video or whatever. So I wanted to highlight this in this quick one today. AT&T has already flew by their very reserved, very conservative predictions and estimations and goals for their 5G plus C-band and 77 build. All right, that build has already hit 75 million pops. Pops represents points of presence, the number of people within a geographical area that is being served by the service. So they've exceeded that goal already. And in my estimation, they didn't really start building this portion of the network up until the spring. And here we are kind of like in the heart of the summer, and they already hit the 75 million pops. And they've really only built it in maybe half of the markets that, say, like Verizon has. All right, so they're, they're starting to catch traction. The supply chain for the radio gear has stabilized, and it's now abundant. They're putting up both types of C-band right, the 3.45 and the 3.7 gigahertz at the same time, you know, due to the supply kind of stabilizing. And they're going to exceed their goal. The goal was very conservative, I will admit to that, but I always kind of felt like I know what they're capable of. I saw what they did with FirstNet. I saw what they did with Band 14 and Band 29 and Band 30 over the last couple of years. There was no reason to believe they couldn't do something similar with a mid-band build. So I'm estimating for them to at least hit the 100 million pops by the end of this year, I would not be surprised if they exceed it somehow, some way, maybe 110, 120, 130 million pops. Verizon has does, done something similar, right? They set their, their predictions or their goals, and they've exceeded that as well. No, they're early clearing C-band for more markets, and they're going to deepen channels and get them wider, making them faster and densifying and you know throughout the whole process. You know, do not, do not be shocked by this. Uh, the Death Star is coming. All right, they've already done it in my market. They've already started that process. They're in the middle of it. They're doing great. More and more, more of those markets are going to start to see those types of experiences. I think the fact that you know we're seeing them exceed this uh, is a good sign. And this is where things kind of like from the investor, they were kind of bummed out. They guided down the free cash flow. Well, they're using that couple of billion in cash flow deduction uh, reduction and they're using it towards spending on the network so i'm happy i i really don't care about the investment angle you know it doesn't matter to me uh, i care about the network so they're taking their capital they're taking their free cash flow they're reinvesting it into their customer experience on the network and we have ourselves a very competitive 5g network relative to verizon and hopefully soon relative to T-Mobile, who's had a couple of years of a head start in building their mid-band 5G, the 5G UC. 
All right, so be on the lookout for massive upgrades and huge noticeable gains in performance on AT&T's 5G+. This is a great thing in my estimation. Have you guys been been seeing this? Have you noticed it? Are you excited about it? Uh, go ahead, comment down below on all the commentary from today's video. I'll go ahead and link both of these articles in the description. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload. There's other things in the description box like my Twitter handle, my Gmail address for business inquiries, and my Patreon page link if you want to get more access to the SMT. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Peace.